Hey guys, so feeling like I'm in the channel mood. So what I'm gonna do is channel the Archangel Michael deck. I have been working with him a lot and I've, um, I'm just about to upload another YouTube video. I'm on a roll. Um, and I actually had Archangel Michael come through with movement for me. Um, I had him come through through dance and I had this new idea that I actually have a feeling that, hey Mitch, um, that I'll be embodying different archetypal energies to send you guys messages. But I'm also gonna send you guys, um, you know, voice messages like this that I usually do. I feel really proud of myself to be able to, um, I miss you, how are you going Mitch? Oh my God, we did Home and Away together, didn't we? <laughs> That's where we met, didn't we? I'm trying to remember now. Um, I'll need to catch up with you and see what you're doing. You're still on cruise ships and stuff like that. Um, God, that seems like a lifetime ago. For anyone that doesn't know that's jumping on this live, we're going to watch it later. Um, I was an extra and I did like Home and Away and Love Child and all the fun things. Um, Tim Tam commercials. I did a, like, an Australian movie called Ruben Guthrie. Anyways, not the point of this, um, could, could tie into it in some way, but we're just going to see like what the collective needs to hear right now. Um, so I'm not, I'm just going into this completely clear channeled. I've done a few readings today. Ah, perfect. Okay. So, you know, we always come down to this meaning, which is your inner guidance is real and trustworthy. Yeah, you know, we belong together. Yes, yes, let's do it, Mitch. Um, okay, so trusting your inner guidance is real and worthy. So a lot of the time, what does happen with your intuition, that gut feeling, um, or that little knock on the door from the universe that's continuously, I guess, bringing you signs, and you're not really listening? Well, the universe likes to turn up the heat, and this is interesting because God is in charge, okay? So look, I don't necessarily believe that, you know, the universe is in charge of everything. Um, we're here to co-create, which means this is beautiful because how can you allow and yourself to trust your inner guidance and have this universal energy sort of like back you up, okay? So a lot of the time we're like, oh, we'll just leave it up to the universe. And like, I, I definitely went through a stage where I was like, I'll oh, just screw it. I'm not even gonna make any decisions. And I was like, hold on a second. I need to trust my intuitive gut and like make small action steps towards, um, uh, you know, my goals and whatever else I was wanting to achieve. So the point though is, is that we can get really lost in the spiritual community or any community really. And we just think that either it's totally up to the higher power and you don't have to do anything and you can sit on your couch waiting for a soulmate to just knock on the door and come at you. And it's like, no, like get on Tinder, get on Bubble, get on Hinge, go out to clubs and date people. Maybe not clubs, I don't know. Maybe not online dating either. The energy there is a bit strange. Um, but get out of your comfort zone, go on blind dates, like ask your friends to set you up this is just an example that I'm using is like, you need to trust your guidance. Like, do you actually believe that you can sit there on the couch every day in and out and not actually get out into the world and vibrate and be magnetic? This is a really strong point that I want to make to you guys because I'm obsessed with magnetism. How can you become the most magnetic version of yourself possible? You know how to do that? Seriously, you need to trust your inner guidance. The more that you actually trust that part of you that's like knocking on your door going, hello, 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 you need to follow this. Otherwise, the universe is going to turn up the heat and, and make you have no choice but to step up in alignment. That is the funnest part about this journey and becoming magnetic. So what you do when you trust your inner guidance, you actually signal to the universe, oh, he or she is ready to actually follow her divine path. He or she is ready to, you know, get on board the soul purpose train. And really, like so many of us are actually searching for our soul purpose. You know, um, you might be sitting there and you're like, what am I going to do next with my life and all of this? And we're still trying to figure it out. This is where God becomes in charge a little bit. And, and he's in charge of the outcomes. I believe everything is laid out for you before you get here as a human, but you agree to the human experience. But the way to actually align with your higher self 
is to trust your inner guidance. It is super fun to do it. Um, it can also be really, really challenging and very, very scary um, at first because when you start to trust your intuitive guidance, people start to worry about you. <laughs> They go, are you okay? Um, I'm sorry, like I can't deal with this um, unpredictability. So when you do start, I guess, trusting in a higher purpose, Emily, hello, gorgeous girl. Oh my God, I miss you. I can't wait to come back to London. So once you try, start trusting in a, higher, in a higher guidance and then trusting yourself as well, you'll be able to signify again to the universe that you're ready to step up, you're ready to, I guess, go forth. And if you detach this from a situation, this is the next card that's come through. I just wanted a bit more information. Um, the reason of what's holding you back from trusting your inner guidance is the fact that you've not yet detached from a situation. Um, and that's that's sort of what's going on. So I want you to sort of feel into whoever's watching this. This will go on YouTube as well as a um, as a reading. But what do you feel attached to? Now this brings me back to the concept of what detachment even is. Okay, one of my clients yesterday I had, and she was um, she's amazing. She's been with me for a while, and I noticed she was really attached to the outcome of a relationship that she's in, a long distance relationship. Now. She freaked out when I said you need to detach from the outcome of the relationship. She's like, oh my God, am I like, does that mean I'm cutting a cord for the relationship? And I said, no, you're cutting a cord for the expectation for it to be forever or to be here, you know, him in the country next week. You're cutting the cord of attachment. You're not cutting the cord of the relationship specifically, the actual thing. Like, do you really think we, okay, look, do we, do you think we have that much power? Like, I know we're pretty magical beings, but I sort of laugh when we say like, I missed a gratitude for one day and then they took my soulmate away. Like, no, that's not how the universe works. Like it's, it may synchronistically line up that way, but then you blame yourself for actually like not giving gratitude for a day. And it's like, the spiritual checklist bullshit can get really frustrating. But another part that I want to really bring to with um, the detachment of a situation, let's say it's your dream or what you think you want to achieve, or it's a certain amount of money, or it's a certain house that you really want to buy, um, whatever it is that you're sort of maybe dreaming and aspiring to uh, achieve in this lifetime, let's say. I want you to aim to detach and cut the cord from you to that thing. So let's say um, it's your dream job, whatever that might be, right? Um, so you imagine that there's a cord from your heart connecting you to this dream job or relationship or money, whatever it is. And I want you to imagine the attachment. Not You're not cutting the cord and you're not saying to the universe, I'm done with this dream, fuck off. Or I'm done with earning this amount of money. Like you're not signifying to the universe that you're wanting to cut your dream off. You're cutting the attachment to if that comes true. You're cutting the attachment to actually receiving the money. And when you do that, you end up being in receiving mode. So many people say is, you know, trusting my inner guidance enough to sort of like allow me to receive. And I'm like, well, no, not if you're still attached to so many of the outcomes and you're trying to control. So another beautiful message that's popping through is that with your intuition, I mean, there's not really any other choice. So, you know, I was actually on the phone to um, my cousin today and I said, what's your gut say? And she goes, well, it's actually tearing me in two different directions. And I'm like, no, that's the ego. Our ego is always giving us options to make us apparently feel safe, but it's annoying because then we have FOMO, like fear of missing out if we don't actually choose all options. They, anyhow, the ego is a mind trip and a mind fuck. But your intuition, usually just knows. It's just our ego doesn't want to admit it. We don't want to admit it because we have all this fear. So we're really coming out of um, a fear-based society uh, from that three-dimensional dense energy uh, yeah, of the third dimension. And we're coming into this where well, we are in the fourth dimension at the moment. And it's now being able to play with energy and being able to sense each other, knowing that we're all connected, knowing that you know we have these polarities and they um, complement each other. We don't know light without dark. Um, you know, black without white, up without down, and so on. 
and we see that it all works together just like we see that we are a part of the universe we are an expression of um, unity consciousness we're just experiencing it in a human form which is quite interesting to like sort of journey through um, up on my YouTube channel soon will be a video about the signs and symptoms of a spiritual awakening because you will start to wake up out of the mind um, and, and into the heart and that's where we become way more uh, receiving because the divine feminine is all about the receiving energy it's all about how can you open up to receive the money to receive the soulmate to think whew, spirit won't shut up to think that we are in control of all of life and to think that we have to have that responsibility like oh my god i don't want that responsibility like i mean i'm feel i'm powerful and i can co-create my reality and stuff like that but i don't want to have to focus on the outcome i want to take the small steps start to trust the inner guidance start to see that god or the divine or source is backing me up to unblock so to really sort of get in touch with what the mind is playing tricks on you for because the ego can get real sneaky especially when you do start to vibrate at a higher frequency the mind can really start to like weasel its way in and and your conditioning can take control but any decision that you're actually making at the moment, guys, you'll know if it's coming from conditioning or whether it's coming from ego. Um, so that's the same thing, conditioning or consciousness. Consciousness will um, be the little bouts of inspiration that the little breadcrumbs going, oh, that could be really good for you, you know, or um, that might be a good option. Or have you considered that before? That could be fun. That's sort of the, I don't know whether your conscious voice actually says it in that way, but mine does sometimes. So you might actually start to feel that, um, I guess those voices inside your head, you'll be actually able to start to like follow those voices. And, and that is following your inner guidance. But if it's coming from the mind, you'll start to notice that it can get really loud, really noisy. It can become very jealous. The mind will always um, sort of the ego and conditioning will keep us safe and small. And, um, you know, our inner child sort of is wanting that protection because we had to do what we had to do as a kid to survive. Yeah, like to survive our parents, to survive school. And so we came up with all these bloody defense mechanisms, fight, flight or freeze, those three that you'll either do and they're the very reactive states um it's survival instinct and we're wanting to detach from these so that we can start to actually open ourselves up to what the universe is trying to be give us like all along um everything's already figured out it's just we need to remain in alignment with um where we're going and it doesn't mean knowing the outcome this is the thing this is what sort of like starts to really piss me off about some um uh, I guess teachings and stuff like that is that they can guarantee you um, an outcome like do this course and I guarantee you'll find a soulmate or uh, do this course and I'll, you're guaranteed to earn X amount of money by the end of it and it's like we're still in that old paradigm of like do X Y and Z to achieve Y and it's like hold on we just need to unblock we just need to clear our mind we need to open up our channel to receive but because we've lived in a patriarchal society for so long, um, it's, it's really sort of like hindered our ability to tap into our emotions, to be in receiving mode and um, to be creative and to be in flow. And we're really, um, this is where the sword comes into it. It's like really heavy energy and like you're needing to cut cut those ties to needing to be so productive all the time and think that you need to do all of these things to achieve something because what are we even trying to achieve in this lifetime like you know if you read there's this book um i don't know what it's called but it's the five regrets before dying or something like that amazing book i'd read it and i, I um i can't remember all five of them but to be fair she this chick interviewed um people in a you know the folks home where they go to die i can't remember what it's called um calgary i have no idea whether that's right or not 
But um, basically, a lot of the regrets that people have is like, you know, they spent too much time at work and not with their family. They didn't open up. They didn't communicate. I love you enough to people. And like, mate, that's what we're all here for. Like, we don't get to our deathbed and like say, I wish I had have had this much more money. Um, and I wish I had have like not gone to my daughter's christening because I had to like, because I wanted to work. Like, we don't say shit like that. We say like, I wanted to spend more time with my family or I wish I told my loved ones I loved them more. Or I wish I just chased after that dream. That's a really big question one is like following your intuition and your emotions um not when your emotions are so clouded but the point from this is that the thing that's stopping us from doing that the, the thing that's stopping us from following our inner guidance is what you're attached to and you're attached to the outcome so let me say if you are in a course right now and it's guaranteeing you something at the end of that so this is the consumerism fucking problem this is where in the last 20 years marketing has just skyrocketed with psychology and it screws us up in the head you just go onto your phone and you literally flick up and it's got all the things you apparently like it's like you have a chip inside you or a chip inside your phone that says that's like programmed to your brain it's actually kind of freaky and what it says is when you buy that t-shirt when you buy that fad tea tea tox type diet thing when you buy this fat cellular reduction when you buy this course to achieve more money then you'll be happy it's exactly the same thing we're trying to sell people on something that is not a guarantee because you meet anybody who has like a high powered job and in a higher status i have coached a few people who are earning a lot of money and they get there and they're like the next pay rise isn't enough and enough and enough and enough and funnily enough, not even my clients, when I went traveling, I met um, a lot of gypsies. And, you know, you can't judge these beautiful humans because so many of them came from being a lawyer, being a top end businessman and being a family man. They had the white picket fence, the Range Rover, all of the things. And they've chosen to live in a van and travel. So they had to realize that, you know, they were so disconnected from their inner guidance system. They were so disconnected because they were attached to thinking that the white picket fence would feel like a home, that um, their relationship would make them feel love or that their amount of money and their pay status um, would determine their worth. And it just doesn't. So we may as well sort of cut the shit now and sort of start to realize that we are so attached to the outcome. Hello, Beth. Hello. Um, so we're so attached to the outcome of what we want to achieve in this lifetime that we're just blocking ourselves from the abundance that is already in the world to receive. It's just we think we know what we want and then we get it and we're still not happy. And that's where consumerism and marketing and psychology can really start to screw us up. Because again, we're attached to the outcome. We're attached to the shirt making us feel better. We're attached to the soulmate making us feel a certain way. And then what happens when that stuff gets taken away from you? Or what happens when you actually receive it and then you go, oh, this has given me a completely different feeling to what I thought I'd experience. Because you notice with marketing and you notice with all of these things, that are taking us away from our intuitive guidance. We don't need anything outside of us to make us happy. Sure, things can make us happier, but I mean, for me, like I've gone on this complete journey of like solitude and being and stripping back so many layers to really start to own my intuition and to own that part of me that knows that we don't really know what we want in this lifetime. And until we open um, ourselves up to receive the amount of abundance we deserve, and abundance comes in all forms as well, guys, that we don't even know what we're capable of. So like these marketing techniques that are sort of like saying, you know, you'll be happy when you get X, Y, and Z, your, your ego has attached to that. Again, you've probably attached to that. And we need to cut those ties. And so I want to reiterate, though, when you're cutting the ties, it's not saying that you don't want it because maybe you do want it, but you're attaching to the idea that it's going to make you feel a certain way. And, um, you know, that's a big thing. Um, I'll speak to you later, lovely. Have a great day at work. Um, yeah, it's just insane how much um, I guess we've really been screwed over Um with the ego and, and with marketing and with all these um, 
just these life up life it's the human experience isn't it and it's a beautiful experience but i'm gonna wrap it up with um one last message to see what comes through ba -ba. i've just been channeling so much lately it's crazy i feel quite on path you know why i feel on path because i've been listening to my inner guidance and i've detached from a lot as well um so that's cool what is one last message no don't want five cards so you can get to the stage with your angels where you just like one please and once ah. there we go okay ha. Ha. this is your life's purpose of course it is your life's purpose you know what your life's purpose is to trust your intuitive guidance that's all you have to do your life purpose is to trust your intuitive guidance hey bethy um and to detach from situations that are bringing up so much pain and heartbreak and like obsessive tendencies and what are you trying to control because more than likely what you're trying to control is a certain emotion when you receive that certain thing in your life and to be honest until you receive that you're not going to know how you feel and when it comes to manifestation and, and what your purpose really is, it's to feel in the moment. It's to sort of just come back to self and in your body to go, what do I need right now? You know, and we, we're constantly searching for what we don't have. And that is not our fault. Society and, and marketing and um, years of survival brain, the reptilian part of your brain at the back has programmed us and conditioned us in a way to say that if I don't have this, I won't be happy. Or if I don't have this, I won't be successful. But we're starting to really redefine that now. And we're starting to really have a personal experience of what success and what abundance actually means. So stop even searching for your life purpose, because like I said, your life purpose is the fact that you're here living and breathing as a human. And what I'm going to end it on is so many of us are searching for a deeper meaning and a deeper purpose. And what if that was just to come back to yourself? Like it's not to achieve anything. It's not to become famous or successful. And if that happens as a byproduct of coming back to yourself, amazing, super, super, super duper awesome. If, and that'll probably make you really happy because you know that like you've gone through the process of coming to yourself first, then you receive all of the other things outside of yourself. But those who have just gone straight into trying to figure out what their life purpose is, they're going to try for a very long time. They're going to try to figure out their life's purpose when really all you need to do is follow the breadcrumbs that's going to continuously lead you on your life purpose. Your life purpose is not a destination. This is where it gets trippy too. It's not a destination. It's a constant journey. It's a way of being. So that's basically it for today. I thought that was a pretty cool channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, again, this is going on YouTube as well. So like, subscribe, share, whatever you feel like doing. Um, but I'll have more readings and stuff up for you guys soon. And I hope you have a great day or night in the world wherever you are.